All right, so today we're gonna to be diving into how to manage not only a down market, but how to be a successful, not only investor, but also improving on your own self in these markets when things may not be going as planned. We'll dive into that deep today. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. This is a little bit of a different show today. What I wanted to do on this, because we've been getting so many different, not only comments, but of course, communications into the diamond circle. As you guys know, our private member group, and a lot has, has really kind of gone into how to deal with more personal situations than investing and understanding technology that's really driving blockchain. So I thought, hey, listen, there's a guy I'm watching on YouTube. His name is Rich Cooper, and he runs a channel called Entrepreneurs in Cars. And I thought this might be a good fit for our channel, which has a lot of what I think are alpha investors. So Rich, welcome to the show. Hey, Paul, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, excellent. All right, so we've had a chance to kind of dive into uh, investing in general and from an alpha mindset, meaning not investing in scams, really doing your research, taking responsibility for your own actions, kind of doing, doing the work as you kind of talk about a lot in your book and also on your channel. I wanna jump into a couple of things around um, how to, one, kind of prepare for a down market because this is typically where millionaires are made. It's also typically where a lot of good people are broken. So mm -hmm. this is something I thought that would be a, a really good uh, test for you. Let's get into our first questions in terms of an alpha mentality in a down market. You coach a lot around this, around relationships, money, finance, building, you know, building yourself. Tell me some of the things that you're coaching your own people on, on building an alpha mentality in these down markets. Yeah, it's, um, that's a great question. I do uh, bi-weekly Zooms with my private community regularly. And one of the questions that came up a few times in the last few days was, um, you know, are you concerned about the reception? What's your planning for it? How are you investing in it? And truth of the matter is, it doesn't really bother me. Recessions have never really affected me in any way, shape or form that I can recall. And I've been through a bunch of them now. I mean, I'm now a seasoned gentleman with salt and pepper in my beard. So I've gotten to that point in life where I've seen quite a few. And I think as long as you've structured your life in such a way that you're closer to anti-fragility than you are to fragility, then it's it's just a hiccup. It's just a bump in the yeah. road. It's a mild uh, cold, you know, if anything. I think the people that get affected the most are the ones that are, um, you know, working the nine to five J-O-Bs that are potentially laid off or caught up in economic downturns where um, there's slowdowns in production or anything like that. And they see job cuts or layoffs or, um, you know, cut back in hours. So I think this is a great time for investors that are savvy to accumulate stuff that's on sale, you know, if you will, yeah. it's, it's available at a discount, whether you're looking at stocks or real estate or cryptocurrencies, you know, especially, um, and accumulate as much as you can. It's a good time to buy. Yeah. I like the uh, the mindset side of things. You know, I've I've listened to several of your podcasts. Uh, have kind of gotten um, dialed into what you're doing in the book. You know, how to understand, how to recognize certain things within your own ecosystem and kind of your own life. When you look at um, investing, and let's kind of stay on the alpha mentality because this is one thing that we get a lot of questions on. Is being able to kind of have that rigidity there, uh, being able to kind of hold when you need to hold being able to sell and not fall in love with these assets is one of the things we talk about a lot here on this channel. Do you find more people when they're coming to you, uh, especially about trying to build themselves, are they focused in on, you know, things like investing, uh, trying to build wealth, personal wealth, or are they focused in on relationships? Where is it, where do you find kind of the, the weight between those two areas? Um, people spend, men, you know, specifically spend, too much time, in my opinion, chasing women rather than chasing excellence. Yeah. Um, the woman part kind of takes care of itself once you've got your head screwed on right and you've unplugged from lies around what attracts women and how to create wealth and you know how to build something in your life that's more anti-fragile. Uh, but yeah, I think I think once people get the relationship part squared away, which I talk a lot about in my book and on my channel. I mean, if you've watched any of my podcasts, you notice that I get a lot of call-ins from people trying to square away their heads and where they're at with a relationship. And I kind of wish they would spend more time talking about chasing excellence and, you know, creating generational wealth that has some lasting meaning for them. 
yeah. but that's where they tend to go is is kind of figure out the girl part first and then after they figure that out then it's like okay now that i understand the girl part and that women prefer high value men that chase excellence that are competent that know how to make it rain and make money and all that sort of stuff then they recognize that oh now i've got to sort of take care of this part of my life because if i want a woman in my frame and complimenting me then i've got to kind of be that guy i can't fake that I like I like that approach in the sense to because uh, we're seeing more and more investors right now coming into the market, probably more so now that we are seeing kind of the downtrend, which I think a lot in a lot of cases, it's people recognizing either that crypto or digital assets in general are in kind of a very vulnerable position for potential wealth building opportunity. And you know, we haven't seen many recession, pre-recession kind of scenarios like what we're seeing right now. So I think having your head on straight is going to be a big part of this for the right kind of investor. And that's another area that I want to dive into you with. And that is, okay, so you've got a guy that maybe they're investing, uh, they've got a wife or they've got, you know, a, a better half, whatever that might be. And they're investing in crypto. Maybe the other party is, um, you know, maybe they're a traditional 401k investor. They don't necessarily understand blockchain. And things are really right now kind of on fire uh, when you look at crypto in general. What are some of the things you have to be able to do to kind of prepare your partner, whatever that might be, to be able to withstand this kind of potential winter that we're up against in the next few months? Yeah, if you're talking about receiving consent from your partner, from a wife, um, she's got to be in your frame. You know, she yeah. has to look up to you. She has to see you as a leader. She has to trust you because you're going to be making decisions at times like this that she's going to question, oh, you know, do you really need to dump X amount of money into, <clears throat> you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever it happens to be that you're putting money into that, you know, most of the media in the world still don't understand and, and call monopoly money or pretend stuff. Um, yeah, you're going to have to be a strong man to lead a woman into that because, if she doesn't trust you, if she doesn't have the ability to look up to you, you're going to have some real difficulty with that. I think the key here is going to be, you know, because a lot of times when I see financial, uh, all of my friends and really great friends, I've seen many marriages, things like that, broken because of finances, typically the number one reason. And I'm always worried about those kind of scenarios, especially running a channel like we run. Well, we've got a lot mm -hmm. of people that are really in either times of great, you know, great wealth because they ran through the last bull run, they've sold at the top, they've been in a position, maybe they've been in crypto or in blockchain for maybe since 2012 or even 2017, the last run, and they're in a great position. Then you have the, you know, the newbies who are getting into the market right now, which is a great time, I think, to be getting into those markets. But to your point, you've got to have someone, especially in a relationship that is in your frame, kind of understanding that it's kind of whether you have an alpha relationship or you're able to at least coach up the person or the relationship you're with to kind of get to that level of understanding of, hey, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So lots of big things there. When you, okay, so um, getting the right kind of relationship in place to be able to handle investing, because this is super risky, high, highly volatile, but at the same time, potential big wins. There's going to be some millionaires made um, and more uh, in the next, probably in the next 16 to 18 months. We're going to see a lot of activity in the market. Looking at success traps, and I want to talk about this and explain what they are. And this is for many of you guys that are, um, and women that have been able to win big in the crypto market. As you guys know, we follow a ton of channels that really go outlandish with maybe they've got, got into cars or they've got into uh, exotic vacations, super ridiculous homes, things of that nature. What are some success traps, uh, Rich, that you kind of coach your people on around watching out for once you do have that level of success so that you can maintain it throughout the years? Yeah, I see a lot of guys moving in and out of the crypto markets when they really shouldn't be. Um, I've heard a lot of guys, um, and there was a few even the other day in my group call where they were complaining about the market downturn and my portfolio's down and, you know, I, I shouldn't have bought Bitcoin when I did and blah, blah, blah. And it's, it, you know, I just look at it like, look, if you can't buy a digital asset like, you know, Bitcoin or Ethereum, you know, for example, and see past four or five years and why are you buying it? Right. Like unless you really know what you're doing and you're good at reading charts and, you know, you've got some proven success in timing the market coming in and out of it. 
but I mean, if you need money, just borrow against it. Like Bitcoin's now a digital asset, right? Sailor talks mm -hmm. about it being like digital real estate. If you need access to cash, you can basically take a loan out against it at around 50% LTV and you've got money for whatever you need and you've still got that hard asset. Um, I'm at a point right now where I'm looking at the market and I'm taking loans out against my Bitcoin to buy more Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. So like, like there's different programs out there that you can participate in where you can essentially stake assets that you have to get more assets. The interest rates are reasonable and you can generally get in and out of the loan within six to eight months if you time it well um, with a pretty strong profit. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the buy, sell, the move in and out, uh, guys, it also creates tax events too, for many people, depending on where you live. So there's that to consider as well. Yeah. As far as success traps, have you seen guys who have made it big, maybe they, maybe they're new money. Uh, maybe this is their first run at success. Maybe they haven't had a failure yet. And because there's a lot of that happening in the market right now, have you seen certain aspects of their own life that kind of pushes them in a, into a direction that's saying, hey, you, you're potentially going on a path that's going to be self-destructive in the future or potentially self-destructive? Anything in that direction that you guys are tracking? Interestingly, it's, it's not normally Lambos or buying <laughs> um, toys. It's often inviting chaos into their life in the form of a woman with a bunch of red flags that, you know, add to the problems that they've, that they've already got or, mm. uh, create a, a layer of complexity that makes it quite difficult for them to enjoy that wealth. So, uh, you know, I think that if anything, when it comes to success traps, I think guys need to look within and I talk about unplugging on my channel and I wrote the book, the unplugged alpha to help guys understand how the world really works versus the way they've been told that it works. And one of the greatest like thieves of a man's wealth is again, inviting the wrong woman into your life. So yeah, you definitely become more attractive when you become a Bitcoin millionaire or multimillionaire or a cryptocurrency millionaire or multimillionaire, depending on, you know, what it is that you're moving into, but you've, but you've got to update your belief systems when it comes to life in general, so that, um, you move from, a playing to win sort of mindset to a playing not to lose by making sure that you're playing a little bit defensive when it comes to the things and ideas that you choose to follow in your life. Yeah, I, I would, I, I kind of think when, you know, we get a lot of comments on, you know, being able to understand how to kind of deal with wealth, what kind of new investments do I need to get into? And I like the, at least most of the comments and, and uh, contact that we have with our own diamond circle has been really directing at more education. They're trying to continue to build their knowledge. They're also looking at new investment and some diversity around kind of the investment track. So I think they're most of our, at least most of our viewers, I feel like are in the right, the right frame of mind around how, how to get this into the next level. Okay. So I've watched a couple of uh, shows on your channel. You dive into a few things around um, scams. And mm -hmm. this is something that we talk about on our channel all the time. And that is investing in, you know, the pure play blue chips, as it were, in some of the case, altcoins, we look at layer ones, we look at, you know, kind of the, the roster of, you know, the, the top tier assets out there. But at, at times there are a few, what we call degen assets that start to flow into not only people's investment um, satchel, but it also gets into their whole psyche, you know, and it's mm -hmm. something that I'm watching more and more, especially in crypto, it feels like there's almost like these small cults that are being built around certain things. So yeah. what, what do you have to watch out for when you're investing to be able to identify these things when, when you do come across an asset or a particular project that kind of leans that way? I think younger guys have a harder time with it, if I'm being honest. And even some of the more plugged in older guys still struggle with spotting the cults and the scams um, because they're not official cults and scams as you know, we've come to know them in the past, but they, right. you know, it's the whole, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck and waddles its tail like a duck, it's probably a duck, right? So if you have these overly enthusiastic evangelicals that are just kind of like pushing this narrative, a lot of them use YouTube now. And it, there was a video that I'm sure that you saw that I'm, that I'm going to tell you about on my channel where there was a young 17 year old kid who was pushing this, uh, shill coin, you know, we'll just call it, uh, basically 
tagging my name and using my, um, you know, good name to drive traffic to his content so we can get more people on board to sell it. That's a cult, you know, that's, that's, yeah. that's people that are encouraging you to put your life savings and they're not even encouraging you to put a small amount. They're encouraging you to put pr practically your life savings into something with promises of 4,000 X, 8,000 X, 10,000 X, um, which is absurd. I mean, your chances of winning the lottery are probably equal and there's nobody that, that goes and mortgages their house and puts it all down on a lottery ticket, hoping to become a multimillionaire. Uh, but there's still people duped every day that fall for these get rich quick scams just because people are persuadable in that sense. And they, and they always look for the easy way to make money. They look for the easy way to lose weight. If I take this pill, am I going to lose 50 pounds in two weeks? If I rub this cream under my eye, will I remove 10 years of aging and wrinkles? And they fall for it. And fortunately, you know, there's a lot of shills out there that have the get rich quick schemes um with a lot of good narratives to sort of back it up that encourage others that are persuadable to you know dump money into something that drives up the price but you've seen them i mean there's there's what nineteen thousand five hundred cryptos out there if we're talking about cryptocurrencies and really there's probably 10 maybe a dozen that are that are really truly worth putting you know some money in the rest of them are going to disappear over the years yeah, I, we talk about this a lot in terms of what's going to make it through the, you know, this particular bear market. There's a lot of, even I think to a certain extent, if you look at the meltdown of Luna and UST, mm -hmm. what that was, which was a high class, high quality, or so I think everybody thought at the time, if you looked at it a year ago, there were so many major investors in it. So it's pretty hard for even the really well qualified to spot these things. But I think to your point, Sometimes when you start looking at these overzealous founders and or, you know, project leaders in, in many cases, when they get out outside the point of where they're starting to make some pretty bombastic claims or they're starting to reach in and really kind of go uh, double down, usually you can identify that. It happened with Do Kwan, which, which is how he was kind of isolated in on Terra and, and what happened yeah. with UST is those kind of scenarios could have been identified. A lot of people were looking at those kind of scenarios, and I think that's the thing that is going to continue on, unfortunately, here in the crypto market. Last question for you is, um, you talk about a lot about things in terms of red flags. I know it's mostly on re relationships, but mm -hmm. when you look at it for investing, red flags being watch out for these kinds of you know scam elements that can show up. If you see something that feels like it's just too good, it probably is. What are some other things that you're watching or that you maybe heard from your own group that uh, are kind of putting a pinpoint on uh, red flags for investing in the future uh, soon? Yeah, um, I, th I think the too good to be true claim is probably the one that you want to pay the most, most attention to when people make overly exaggerated claims of um, r results that don't seem common. I mean, the stock market generally in a good year will do what, six, eight, nine percent. Um, you know, if you're lucky, it, it, it generally beats inflation. But when people come at you with, oh, buy this, this is like buying Bitcoin in 2010. And, you know, you should put, you know, a good chunk of your savings into it and you can expect it to four at 4,000 X or 10,000 X. It's like, there's nothing out there that I'm aware of that, that will do that. I mean, Maybe the early adopters that get in early and then push it out to their audiences to show to other people. When you start having people approach you on the street talking about a great opportunity, that's when you should get really you know, suspicious of what it is that they're talking about because that's not yeah. how good investments work. Yeah, I think you're dead on there. Last question is um, investing in yourself. I know this is a time we talk about how projects, good projects kind of put their heads down Usually they've got a little bit of runway in cash and they really go in and they start developing good quality product. They're kind of innovating. We're seeing a lot of that in the market right now. But from a personal investor standpoint, this is a time in which you can really, you know, level up on your education, level up on your maybe diversifying your portfolios, getting into other uh, market classes and other asset classes that mm -hmm. kind of start to spin you into some potential of really kind of growing your uh, potential wealth in the future. In terms of investing in yourself, how's important, how important? I know you run courses and all that, but is this one of the key things in really kind of growing your own self in anything you're doing in life? 
Hundred um, percent. I'm not a big fan of being a employee. Job, in my view, is an acronym for just over broke. Most people never create serious generational wealth being an employee. I've been an employer. I've been an employee. I've employed lots of people. Um, I would even tell my own employees, you know, you're never going to create serious amounts of wealth doing this. But at the end of the day, um, we're in an environment now today where I think guys especially need to contemplate making the, themselves their own mental point of origin and seriously consider starting up their own business. Um, we're in a practically permissionless economy today. You don't need anybody's permission to publish a book. I didn't need anybody's permission to write this book. I did it myself. I, I published it. It's been a great seller. Um, 20 years ago, I would have had to go to some publishing house and they would have had to authorize, you know, the content and, and you know, negotiate the terms. You don't need to do that anymore. You don't need anybody's permission to publish on a video platform like YouTube. Um, so you get the idea. Like if you want to create content and put it out there and create a business and build an audience, it's it's now easier than ever. I, I do have a course, you know, speaking of courses, which is closed right now, but it opens again in August. It's called the School of Entrepreneurship. And I basically go through what distinguishes a lucrative, easy and fun business from one that's more annoying, lame, frustrating and hard. Uh, yeah. Because most people, when they do get into starting their own business, they they kind of do the conventional thing. They look for something that seems like it it works, or they might see ads on social media uh, feeding through, saying, "If you just follow my Amazon FBA blueprint, you too can have this Lambo, you know, behind me as well," sort of thing. And the truth of the matter is, is um, you know, those that can really are doing, and those that can't tend to put out easy shill stuff like you know, follow this blueprint and you too can be a Amazon billionaire or millionaire or whatever. Um, the, the mindset part is the most important part. You know, like you, you obviously understand the mindset behind making good investing decisions, the mindset behind starting up a business and really putting something out there that is going to make you money. That's going to give you freedom. That's going to give you control. Because if you want to make a lot of money, you're going to need dry powder. You're going to need cash. Right. Yeah. And investing, you know, ten thousand dollars is a start. You can turn it into something. But investing a hundred thousand, half a mil, a mil into something that that ten x's, you know, um, that's where you can see some significant, you know, generational wealth. So, again, um, can you do it being an employee? Sure, you know, you can dollar cost average into the stock market into crypto. But, you know, the guy that's been sitting on half a million dollars in cash running his own business. And there's this accountant is, is telling him here, you know, you've got to do something with this money and there's an economic downturn. There's a buying opportunity and he wants to pick up real estate, stocks, crypto. He's in a great position to right. take advantage of the downturn while there's blood in the streets and, you know, make something with himself. Yeah. I think that's one of the things we've talked about here a lot, especially over the last uh, two to three months is that this is the dry powder time. It's the time in which either you're parking in USDC or you're doing something with these yield aspects, whether it's on different platforms, things of that nature, but really kind of waiting in the market for the perfect pounce time to, to really get it, kind of get in on it. And to your point, it really does start to create generational wealth. It starts to change the whole dynamic around, you know, how investors are moving forward. And that's what our channel does is, you know, it, it really dives into coaching people on how to stop, spot the projects that are working, how to identify blockchain winners, all that kind of stuff. But I think what you guys are doing over there uh, is definitely something that I think we're going to continue to see on, especially in these markets, which is where people start to kind of look inward and they're trying to figure out ways to improve themselves so they can really start to accelerate uh, the future of what they've got out there in the market. But hey, Rich, it's been great having you on the show today. Thank you so much for stopping in. We appreciate it. Thanks, Paul. Excellent. All right, so you guys are tuned in over on the podcast right now. Best thing to do is jump over here on the YouTube channel. This is the place where we do a lot of our breakdowns in terms of projects. Occasionally, we'll do videos like this where we'll dive into kind of the mentality of investing and understanding how to become a, maybe a great entrepreneur. Maybe you need to take a look in a different direction in terms of diversifying your portfolio, things of that nature. Maybe you're really into technology and you're trying to figure out some best paths of where this is going, whether it's metaverse, blockchain, NFTs, what's happening within blockchain gaming. All that's happening right here on this channel. Make sure and check us out. Of course, if you want to reach me, it's out on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.